for sure with films like Hurt and um, uh, Ninth Floor, Mina Shum's film. Um, uh, you know, there was a, a long string of uh, Closet Monsters, Sleeping Giant. There was a lot of stuff about, um, uh, th the, basically about the fact that we weren't the country that we thought we were, that we were, that it was a, a, a often a mean and a mean-spirited country. But when you see things like Hurt or, or Ninth Floor or the father's behavior in Closet Monster, you, know, you go back uh, like three or four years to Picture Day with the, the mother's treatment of, uh, uh, her daughter Tatiana Maslany's character in, in that film. I mean, uh, there's a great scene where um, uh, Tatiana comes back and she's had like a terrible night, and I, I think either left her boyfriend or something's gone wrong. Uh, and the um, and the mother's broken up with her boyfriend, who she does on a basically a weekly basis, and she's weeping in the stairwell, and she says, "He's left me, and now I've got nothing." And her daughter's sitting right beside her, uh, you know, and she's completely oblivious to what she, you know. That, of course, that bad parenting thing runs throughout. Uh, you know, good parents don't make great drama, really. Uh, but you know, uh, bad parenting runs through Canadian films all the way back to. Um, yeah, because we probably see winter kept us warm. I don't know. Are there parents yeah. in that? Like, yeah, uh, there is. Yeah, I think we. Or we a two prong, the. Uh, a two prong uh, for sure. With Claude Absolutely. Jutra's character, where his mother never <laughs> speaks, and they're sitting there in this stiff, like formal sitting yeah, room kind of deal. There's a lot of stuff about machismo, and there was yeah. a, a heavy, um, a consistent critique of uh, traditional masculine roles in films like Sleeping Giant and Closet Monster and yeah. Hurt. Uh, I mean, Hurt to me is. Uh, I, I kept comparing it to Crumb. Uh, during the festival, just because it's such a uh, insight, insightful portrait of uh, of the sort of um, uh, underclass of Canadian society, I, I didn't know anything about the the area, but it's a it's a really yeah. sort of dilapidated area. And uh, I actually asked a Vancouver-based producer if he'd ever been to the town, and he said, "Yeah, I was mugged in the bus station." Uh, but he'd only been there but once. But it's one of those, yeah, yeah total eye opener. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, and uh, I mean, you really do feel for Fanyo in it too. Uh, I mean, it, w one of the great things about that movie is the uh, level of empathy yeah. towards him, even though it doesn't acknowledge the mistakes he makes. And, no, it know, doesn't. It doesn't flatter decisions. him for no. Yeah, for no reason. It's not. It's not a hey, geography or painting the portrait of a hero. It's no. a complicated human being. Which Very. I think, I think it's the it film. Its, it's one of the films that lingers the most. I think since since seeing it, I, yeah. I remember when we watched it, and you've said it before. Like I think like eight minutes in we turn to each other and really yeah, yeah, oh my like god this I've is never seen anything like that it's not from unreal here. Yeah. it's unreal not from here exactly it's crazy and it good. lingers I, I I will say on a personal level I think it's a film or a person Steve Fanio I've thought about every week since yeah. uh, since then which well, is now six months ago I mean the it's other unreal. the the other one that I think uh, belongs in that group too is Guantanamo's Child the movie about Omar Cotter by yeah. Patrick Reed and Michelle Shepard perfect pair to talk um, about this subject yeah, yeah and th that is uh, I mean that deals with ha what happened happened to Omar Khadr, who was in prison when he was 15, as an enemy combatant sent to Guantanamo. Uh, uh, Dennis Edney, his lawyer, uh, um, you know, spent years working for free to, to uh, 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 you know, to, 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 uh, to, to get charges, to get anything done. Uh, and finally, you know, um, I think he's now 28. That's, uh, it took that long to get him out of out of Guantanamo and to get get him repatriated and then out of prison. I mean, the American government gave up much, uh, was l far less concerned about him than the Canadian government, which I think, uh, again, speaks to the policies of that particular uh, government. But um, I think Guantanamo's Child is a great uh, film in terms of also putting the audience in, in the position of really uh, self-criticizing. I think we yeah. watch it and we're like, where yeah. where was I the whole time? Was where were yeah. the citizens the whole time? Yes, we followed this story closely on the news, but w when you see his his lawyer Dennis Edner go through the Eddie, years, yeah. uh, Edney, sorry, uh, of course, um, go through the years of it, you kind of start thinking, was would have more uh, public pressure changed something? Because now it felt like it was lawyer versus government, and you kind of feel like you were may be guilty in the middle somewhere for not acting as much or not being as vocal yeah. as you should have. I think we often sit back and have our opinions and uh, or our leftist opinions or whatever, yeah. however we might want to define them, but it's one of those things you're confronted to where yeah. 
are am I you know are we useful truly yeah, in, I mean, in I making I, change happen? If if what had happened in the last couple of weeks had happened before he was about to be released, he probably would still be in Ab prison. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. The vitriol around this would be. Uh, it would be it would be pretty intense.